In a previous video, we learned how to name ionic compounds made from alkali metals and alkaline earth metals, the metals in the first two groups of the periodic table. Let's review quickly. What are the ions that barium makes? That's right, barium is an alkaline earth metal, and so it will always make a cation with a positive 2 charge. So BaCl2 is barium chloride. We know that barium ions are always positive 2, and we will always have two chloride ions in the neutral ionic compound. And LiCl is lithium chloride. For alkali metals like lithium, we will always get a cation with a positive 1 charge, lithium plus. But what about the rest of the metals in the periodic table? For the transition metals, located in this middle section of the periodic table, the elements can often make more than one cation, and that makes naming these compounds a little more difficult. Let's explore an example. Iron can typically make one of two different cations, Fe plus 2 and Fe plus 3. So iron chloride might refer to FeCl2 or FeCl3. That's ambiguous, and it just won't work for us. So how do we know which of the two iron cations we have in an ionic compound? Well, there's an additional nomenclature rule for metals that make more than one cation, like transition metals, that help us distinguish them. When we go to name ionic compounds of these elements, ones with transition metal ions with more than one common ionic charge, we use a Roman numeral in parentheses to tell us what the charge of the ion is. So let's revisit these compounds. FeCl2 is comprised of one iron 2 cation and two chloride anions. So we name it iron 2 chloride. Note that the 2 tells us the charge of the iron ion, not the number of chloride, though that also happens to be 2 in this case. Let's try another one. What is the correct name for FeO? Oxide has a negative 2 charge. None of these are the correct name for FeO. We never use prefixes like mono or di for ionic compounds, so this option is out. Iron oxide is ambiguous. There are a lot of iron oxides. We need to be specific. And while there's only one iron ion, the Roman numeral isn't about the number of ions. It's the charge of the iron ion. Here, we know that the iron cation needs to be iron 2 since the oxide is O2 minus and compounds are neutral. So this is iron 2 oxide. Let's try another example. Suppose we have another compound made of iron cations and oxygen anions, Fe2O3. What iron cation is present in this compound? That's right. We know oxygen always makes an anion with a negative 2 charge. Since we have 3 oxygen anions in this compound, our total negative charges are negative 6. Since we have 2 iron cations to balance out the negative charges, each of them must have a positive 3 charge. Therefore, the iron 3 ion is present in this compound. What would be the name of this compound? Exactly. Since our iron cation has a positive 3 charge, the name of the compound is iron 3 oxide. Let's try working with a different transition metal, copper. Copper typically makes one of two different cations, Cu plus and Cu2 plus. What is the copper cation present in CuCl2 and what is the name of the compound? We know that chlorine always makes an anion with a negative one charge because it's in group 17 of the periodic table. Since we have two chloride ions, we have a total of two negative charges in the compound. Therefore, our copper cation needs to have a positive 2 charge to balance out the negative charges. That means the cation present in this compound is copper 2, and its name is copper 2 chloride. Let's do one last example. What is the formula and name of the compound made up of copper 1 cations and sulfur anions? We know that sulfur makes anions with a negative 2 charge since it belongs to group 16 of the periodic table. So we need two copper 1 cations to balance out the negative charges. Therefore, the formula for the compound is Cu2S, and its name is copper 1 sulfide since the copper cation has a positive 1 charge. 